So the next thing we're going to do is download the latest Zabbix repository. And you'll need to go to repo.zabbix.com. You could um, fill in as much of this as you want to get as close as you want to the um, release that you're going to be using. And uh, as you can see, we went with the um, 20.04 all.deb. Um, so it's going to end up being this guy right here, as you can see in our command. Okay, and so that's the one thing you're going to have to hunt down and and get the whenever you decide to do this. If you if you do this right after the video is fresh, that's going to be what you want to use. But on down the road, you're going to have to make sure you keep these compatible uh, with what's been updated. All right, so that has been downloaded 100%. Next, we are going to unpackage and install Zabbix right here on the server okay um, and so that unpackaged now we're going to um, run the apt update All right, after install Zabbix server and a bunch of other requirements for for the Zabbix. Okay, that completed. Now let's install MySQL. Uh, Zabbix will be storing to a MySQL database for all of the um, information it's getting from the from monitoring your Elrond nodes. Okay, MySQL is installed. Now let's um, set it up. Start MySQL. Now we're going to run MySQL. And now we are in the uh, command line interface of MySQL itself. And so this little section here in the notes is just a prompt reminding you this is for the MySQL command line, not for your bash Linux command line. And while upper and lower case in SQL doesn't matter it's it, it does not matter so if some of them are in uppercase it's not a big deal it's just um, um, that's just the standard way you write actual commands um, in uh, in SQL but you will need that semicolon make sure you grab that semicolon paste that in here this is just going to be testing um, SQL uh, the MySQL database and we're gonna see who is uh, running SQL right now what's the what's the user and it is root um, so when we installed and we started when we started MySQL right here the, the default user was root but we're gonna be creating a user and a database here so grab this next line Create database Zabbix called Zabbix. Zabbix. The character is set to UTF-8, and um, next we're going to create user Zabbix at localhost. So at this machine, you're going to want to keep this as Zabbix here, but um, the identified by your password, you can make that whatever you want. All right, so let's run that one. Okay, 
and you should be getting a, an OK, query OK return. All right. Now we're going to grant all privileges to, to Zabbix. All right. And to confirm, we're going to show database. All right, you can see that we have uh, the basic schema databases for MySQL, and we have our Zabbix database right here. All right, and just a quit. Oops. Just a quit, and don't forget your semicolon. All right, now we're back out to the Linux command line, and um, we're going to run and import. to Zabbix, linking up, telling Zabbix, hey, yeah, this is the um, database to use. So this is when this runs, you're going to be putting in the uh, password that you just created for your Zabbix user. And what it should do is pause like this. Depending on the speed of your machine, it could be a couple minutes. So this is what you should see. Okay, we have our Linux command line back. And the next section is, um, okay, in the next section, we are going to configure Zabbix. We're going to come on down here and we're going to be looking for a variable that is db password. Okay, we found it. And it's right here. So it ha you need to get rid of the, the pound. And it'll change color for you. Come to the end. And you're going to put in your password. This is Zabbix's password. Uh, so that's the one you put in on that command. Okay. Now let's control X. Yes, Y for yes. Enter. And we're going to come on down and we're going to change um, another part of this configuration file. All right, this one's easy. Get rid of our pound sign, get rid of the default, and put in your time zone. Okay, control X, Y, enter. Okay. Next, we're going to restart these Zabbix services and Apache there. Okay, now let's enable them. Everything looks good. Okay, so now we should be running. We should be up and running. So the first thing I like to do is just go ahead and check out our default Apache um, web server here. So you're going to put in your IP address. Whoops. Um, but let's go ahead and continue to unsafe site. Um, and so you can see this is just the default page for our Apache web server. It is working. The Where we want to be, though, is forward slash, forward slash Zabbix. Okay, let's go to next step. We got, we have OKs all on the right side. The name Zabbix. Um, user is Zabbix. So look, it's you know wanting me to use their password. Don't use theirs. Use the one that you typed in. 
can even look at it here. All right, that's the one I used. Never. Uh, this is a, an optional name, so if you want to put something um, in here for the name, you can. All right. Everything looks good. Congratulations, you have successfully installed the Zabbix front end. Here we'll hit finish. And um, when I was using Firefox, uh, I did not get any of those warnings and everything. So the default pass, um, default username and password is admin and Zabbix. All right, so here's our Zabbix dashboard. Um, Zabbix is running, yep, on localhost, uh, port um, 10,051. So you'll see right here, um, we the only host that is configured with Zabbix at this moment is itself. So we just have the one. Um, there are a bunch of loaded templates for looking at various points. Um, and we will run through this soon. Um, at this point, we're just ensuring that uh, we have Zabbix up and running. Looks like our database is connected. And now we're ready to configure some agents that we're going to be monitoring. We'll do that in the next section. And then finally, we will attach Grafana.